Hi friends, welcome back. Today we're talking about arithmetic sequences. Now you're probably familiar with these, uh, particularly on those standardized tests you take when you're in grade school. Maybe you remember back to like fourth and fifth grade and it would be like, here are the, there are a bunch of numbers. What's the next number in the sequence, right? Or in this order. Uh, that's exactly what a sequence is uh, as far as arithmetic goes, but we are going to cheat and show you how to write a rule so that you don't have to figure it out on your own. So like, for example, let's look at this one. Three, seven, or I'm sorry, three, 10, 17, 24, 31. You can see that I'm taking three and I'm adding seven to get 10, adding seven to get 17. So I'm adding seven for each of these guys, right? So plus seven. That means my next position, if I have 38 and I add seven to it, I end up with 45, right? So my next numbers would be like 45 plus seven would be 52 plus 50, seven would be 59 and so on and so forth. So now I know what my next numbers are. However, if I asked you what is, so this is like, this guy right here is, all of these are being added, seven's added to all of this. This is position one or term one. You'll hear it called, called term one, but I think the word term gets used a lot and that can be confusing. So I tend to refer to it as a position. So position one, two, three, four, five, six. And so you figured out position seven, eight, and nine. Now, if I wanted you to figure out position 22, you would have to sit here and write all of these out in order to figure out because all you're doing is taking the previous number and you're adding seven to it. So when we go to write that down, the that is called a recursive sequence, recursive. It, a recursive sequence, it uh, requires the previous number in order to uh, get the new number. So the, the formula, the generic formula for recursive is, uh, hey, whatever happened in the previous position, that's what this is, the answer for the previous position, we're gonna add our difference to it and that's gonna give us our new position. So uh, in this case, if I wanted to figure out what happened to like, uh, I wanna know what happens in position 17. Well, I would have to take whatever happens in position 16 and add my common difference of, of seven here. Now, I would need to go all the way up to 16 in order to use this to figure that out. And I am lazy. I don't wanna have to work harder than I absolutely have to. So recursive sequences, they have their place, but they're not as nice as explicit sequences. Because if we, cut, if we can come up with a rule that tells utilizes our position number, then I can say, hey, what is in position 157? And you do not have to list all of these to 157. So using this 3, 10, 7, and, and 17, and 24, our, our common difference is seven. Here's actually what you will need for your rules. Uh, I want you to grab a piece of paper. I'm gonna show you, This is these are what you definitely need for your notes. So here's what I want you to write down. We're not gonna talk about summer series right, right yet, but this is your sequence that you wanna write down. So pause the video, write those down, and then we'll talk about it. Okay, so with that said, we're, uh, we'll are come on to this second example here in just a second. So uh, for this guy, the recursive is this one. Uh, uh, what we wanna do, you know, in fact, we're gonna get rid of the second example here, and we're gonna say, okay, let's do our common difference uh, with our actual explicit formula. So we've got our a n equals d. I get very excited about sequences and series, so I'm sorry if I am feeling very flustered, but I'm very excited about these. So here's what this is saying. We're saying, hey, find that position number. I wanna know what happens in like a, in position 22, right? You take your common difference, you take the position number 22, the n, uh, and minus one, and then you add whatever happens in the first position. So let's make up our generic rule first, and then we're gonna use that to find out what happens in position 22. So we say a n equals our common difference of seven, n minus one plus position, what's the answer in position one? The answer in position one is three. So we say a n equals seven n minus seven plus three, because you'll notice I'm just distributing here, right? So a n equals seven n minus four. So here's what the rule is. Instead of just saying, hey, add seven to the previous number, what we can do is say, hey, take the position number, whatever position, previously I mentioned 101 uh, or 157 or something like that. You take that position number, you multiply it by seven, you subtract four, 
that gives you your answer. So let's try 22. We say, okay, I wanna know the answer when it's in position 22. All we have to do is say, okay, seven times 22 minus four. And if we do seven times 22, we end up with 154 minus four. In position 22, our answer is 150. And that makes sense because we're at like 59, plus we keep adding seven to here, we end up with uh, 150. So let's talk about that with my other example here. So pause for just one moment. Okay, so let's try it with this other example here. We've got, we're gonna write an explicit rule and then we're gonna find what is in term, what is term 15 or position 15 for this guy. Uh, okay, so looking at A, we have four, nine, 14. Okay, so it looks like we're adding five to each of those. That means our common difference is five. You know what, I'm gonna use different colors so you can see. So we know that our common difference is five. D equals five. Now our rule again, don't forget, is we have A, N. I'll write it right up here so we can see A, N equals difference, uh, N minus one plus A1 here. So we have uh, AN equals five N minus one plus A1, which is four, because that's what happens. That's the answer in position four. Uh, okay, so then we say AN equals five N minus five plus four. Combine our like terms here, we get AN equals five N minus one. There is our rule. Now that we have that rule, we can use that to find any position anywhere in this sequence. But I wanna find specific, specifically what happens in position 15. I have one, two, three, four, four positions here. I could sit here and do five, six, seven, all the way up to 15, or I could use this rule here and say, A15 is, Five times 15, whatever that is, we're gonna minus one. So we take 15, multiply that by five, and we get 75 minus one. So we get in position 15, we would have 74 as our answer. So hopefully that makes a little bit more sense. Let's try that with another one here. Uh, so taking a look at these guys, you can try a dark enough marker here. Uh, let's look at this next one. This guy, 60, 52, 44, it looks like we're minusing eight. So our common difference isn't that we're subtracting eight, our common difference is we're adding negative eight. Seems kind of weird, but you gotta think of it that way. We're adding a negative eight to each of these to get this. So D equals negative eight. Now we're gonna say A N equals, and I'm using this formula right back up here, our common difference, negative eight N minus one, plus what happens in position one is 60. All right, let's distribute. We get negative eight N plus eight plus 60 equals negative eight N plus 68. Okay, with that said, we say, all right, now what is, uh, oh, whoops, let me block that off. There's our rule. Okay, so for anything in this sequence, I can just, find the position number, multiply it by negative eight, and then add 68 to it, and that will give me what's in that position number. Specifically, if I wanna figure out what's in position 15, I would say negative eight, add 15 plus 68. So we've got 15 times that by eight, we get negative 120, and then uh, we've got, perfect, so plus 68, we would get A15 gives us negative 52 negative 52. So if I did this all the way up through the 15th position, hopefully that's making sense, or 15th term. Uh, now, writing a rule for the, re uh, let's write a recursive rule for the following. It's these same numbers, right? So this is, the common difference here was five. We're adding five to each of these. The recursive rule would look like this. It would just say, a n equals a n minus one. So what I'm doing is saying, hey, whatever position that I want, I take the one that was previous before it and I add five. That's it, that's the rule. Now this is, I mean, that's a great rule and all, but that's not really helpful because if I wanted to go all the way up through 15, I would have to know what position 14 was. And in order to know position 14, I would have to know position 13, so on and so forth. So it's not always the best way uh, to write these rules. These explicit rules are much more helpful. So same idea with this one. I would just say my common difference is negative eight. 
So my recursive rule would be a n minus one minus eight or plus a negative eight, either way uh, that you want to think about it. So uh, that is the recursive rule. That's why the explicit rule is much easier. Uh, but in, again, in the with the explicit rule, you'll need this cheat sheet. So let me just refresh that. Make sure that you write down both these. The sum in the series is when we add each of those position numbers. Uh, like if I were to ask for the sum or the series of one through five, you would say, okay, position one, two, three, four, five, and then add those all up. We'll talk about that in a different one, but I just want you to know that that's what you're gonna need for this guy. So if you have any questions, leave them below. Otherwise, we'll see you next time.